What gold miners in a bar boasted they'd done to an uncontacted Amazonian tribe is truly disturbing. In a bar in Brazil, close to the Colombian border, a group of illegal miners are spinning tall tales. In the wilds of the Amazon, they claim to have encountered a lost tribe, one of the few communities on earth still untouched by the modern world. But as their story unfolds, they start to brag about having done something truly horrifying. From its mist-shrouded mountains to the thick swaths of the Amazon jungle, Brazil has always been a wild and beautiful place. Ever since Europeans arrived there at the dawn of the 16th century, though, there have been outsiders present who were keen to exploit the country's abundant natural resources. At first, Europeans began exporting Brazil's Pau Brasilia trees, known for their ability to produce a precious red dye. Then the colonists began transforming large tracts of the land into sugar plantations. They enslaved the native peoples and shipped their crops across the world. However, these developments paled in comparison to the gold rush and the rubber boom of the 18th and 19th centuries. Keen to get their hands on these valuable resources, Portuguese buccaneers began exploring the uncharted interior of the country. Wherever they went, the settlers left destruction in their wake, decimating the landscape and destroying the indigenous way of life. Sadly, some 300 years later, little has changed. Although there are no more Portuguese banderantes, their legacy is difficult to ignore. Today, more than 20% of the Amazon rainforest has already been destroyed. In response, the local government has put regulations in place to control deforestation. However, illegal operations continue in a region that is notoriously difficult to police. The tribes that call the Amazon their home have found territory growing ever smaller. The depths of the forest, however, do still conceal communities that have no contact at all with the outside world. Their numbers are in decline, though. According to experts, there are around 100 uncontacted tribes in the Amazon today. Sadly, they're under constant threat from hostile outsiders who can easily outmatch them with firearms and who have the potential to carry diseases previously unknown to them. Concern for these communities is in fact so great that Brazil's National Indian Foundation, or FUNAI, operates an entire department dedicated to their protection. However, some believe that the Brazilian government is not doing enough. In fact, in April of 2017, a lack of funding forced FUNAI to shut down five bases that were being used to defend and monitor uncontacted tribes. Now only 14 remain, and even those have been hit by staffing cuts. Three of these closed bases were apparently in the Javari Valley, a vast 33,000 square mile territory in remote western Brazil. As the second biggest reserve in the entire country, more uncontacted tribes are thought to live there than in any other place on the planet. But with the withdrawal of what resources have been allocated to protect them, these tribes now face an uncertain fate. In a sobering reflection of what could be in store, September 2017 saw a horrifying story emerge from the wilds of the Javari Valley. Several weeks before, an unnamed individual had apparently been in a bar close to the border with Colombia when they overheard a group of prospectors recounting a recent experience in the valley. In Brazil, these illegal miners called Garampieros are known for the destruction that they wreak across the Amazon. According to reports, the miners were bragging about their encounter with an uncontacted tribe. Apparently, they had attacked and killed 10 indigenous people. After the massacre, they claimed to have dumped the bodies in the Jandiatuba River, but not before carving them into pieces to ensure that they sank into the riverbed. The Garampieros allegedly had more than just their words to support these horrific claims. According to the reports, they also produced jewelry and tools that had once belonged to the members of the tribe. Troubled by the minor stories, the witness managed to record their conversation. When the recording was turned over to the authorities, an investigation began. However, it has been plagued by difficulties. Perhaps most significant is the remoteness of the place where the crimes were alleged to have taken place. Indeed, it can only be reached following an arduous 12-hour boat journey into the Amazon. We're following up, but the territories are big and access is limited, lead prosecutor Pablo Luz Beltran told the New York Times in September of 2017. These tribes are uncontacted. Even Funai has only sporadic information about them so it's difficult work that requires all government departments working together. 
investigators are still struggling to gather details of the crime from a community that's isolated and distrustful of outsiders. Meanwhile, indigenous rights organization Survival International has claimed that the incident could have wiped out a significant portion of the tribe and that the government only has itself to blame. Campaigner Sarah Shanker told the New York Times, if the investigation confirms the reports, it will be yet another genocidal massacre resulting directly from the Brazilian government's failure to protect isolated tribes, something that's guaranteed in the Constitution. It's the latest in a line of problems that have been plaguing the unpopular president, Michael Temer. After cutting funding and opening up Amazon reserves to miners, he's faced criticism from a wide range of groups. We had problems with previous governments, but not like this, Leila Silvia Berger Sotomayor, a food eye coordinator, told the New York Times. Although this case is still ongoing, the incident has raised concerns among activists that similar crimes may be going unreported. Survival International Communications Officer Carla Delella Lorenzi told the New York Post, It's the uncontacted versus illegal minors who think they can get away with anything. Unfortunately, a lot of the time they do.